Welcome everyone and welcome to today's video. Now, today we're gonna to be discussing the Delara IR01, the fantasy car that was in partnership with iRacing and Delara uh, that they put together over the lockdown period. And it caused a big hoo-ha at the time because it isn't a real car and the whole draw of sim racing as we know is we are racing simulated virtual versions of real life cars that is the whole draw behind it but me personally i was um i wasn't going to make my mind up too soon i would wait to drive the car and then form my own opinions on it which i did i was a little bit I, it was good fun to drive but quite difficult at the same time now the reason i am discussing this today is because we are only week five into the current season and week five since this car was released and it's not looking good so in today's video we are discussing is the Delara IR01 dead does no one want to race it no more what does iRacing need to do to increase the participation because they are apparently going to be forming a world championship series with this car involved um, but with how bad the participation looks at this moment in time I don't think it could be it could be some heads being scratched and banged together at the iRacing uh, headquarters at this moment in time so lo and behold we are going to discuss a few points of why I think it may be dead and what they could do to improve the series at this moment in time so yeah remember to hit that like and subscribe button guys feel free to join the discord that is in the link in the description below and let's head into it so let's start with the participation of this series or more of the lack of it but let's start from the beginning so week one as always is a brand new car brand new series lots of people have just purchased it they may have had a bit of a play around in week 13 but they want to see how it performs in a proper official race so good participation on average two splits um in peak times sometimes even four splits so good uh, good participation there same as the second week um, as it's round silverstone so the first two weeks we have two tracks that really suit this car because it is as fast really as a formula one car and those are two tracks for the real life formula one series race rounds so it makes sense that these are two tracks that attract the participation and are the first two weeks of the series but then the third week is when we then start to see a bit of a drop off. We go to the Nürburgring, people by two weeks in have found whether if they wanna spend more time in this car or whether they like the format of the series, which we'll discuss a little bit later on in the video. And if, if it's something that they wanna spend their time on. Now the Nürburgring is probably gonna see a lot of crashes with this car, as we know, from previous videos I've done, it is quite twitchy. You can spin the car up. You can spin it in fourth gear. So quite a lot of control and patience is required with it. And I can see why the Nürburgring, there was a little bit of a drop off, but all races, as you can see, are official races. So even though there was only single splits, which isn't great, you're still able to gain I rating and lose or gain safety rating. Now week four, Week four is where we then really start to see a drop off. Uh, we go to Barcelona and while it's a good track and a track that should suit this car, lots of people by then have found out if it's for them or not. And as you can see, there was only one time slot throughout the whole week that there was two splits. That is shocking. There's no other way to say about it. A brand new car that iRacing have tried to push, a car that they want to base a world championship series around, only four weeks in had a time slot with two, two splits. And as you can see, a lot of them were unofficial, which shows to me that there was hardly anyone racing in the single splits. Um, and that brings us on to this week, as I'm currently filming this, uh, it is around Phillip Island. A poor choice of track for this car. Don't know why it's on the schedule, especially five weeks into the series um, or into this season. And it has been the same. At, at, at the, the time of filming this, there hasn't even been a time slot with two splits. 
and the majority of those single splits are unofficial and I have seen multiple uh, time slots with just one person driving or two people driving and that is shocking that isn't I'm I'm really really surprised I mean I know the car is difficult to drive and we'll discuss that uh, very shortly but it's yeah, the guys at iRacing must be or the management at iRacing must be uh, banging their heads against the wall going what is going wrong here so let's let's discuss what is going wrong and what can be changed to make this series uh, more popular and more appealing to um, the iRacing community again. So let's talk about the car itself and the changes that I think need to be made to it to make it more accessible and appealing to the iRacing community again. Now, some of the purists out there will be saying it's perfect as it is, it doesn't need to be changed, but I think the, the figures, the participation figures show otherwise. <laughs> so as we know, this car is very difficult to drive. It has a lot of power under the bonnet. It has a V10 that you can spin all the way up in fourth gear. So to me, I think something needs to be done there with the torque. Um, because unless you are someone who puts a considerable amount of time within um, practice with this car, the general user is going to spin and not enjoy it and just not going to want to touch it again because everyone has limited time. Unless you're a full-time streamer, unless you're a full-time racer, no one really has the time to spend a lot of time practicing. I know some practice is better than no practice, but this is a car to me that I think requires considerably more practice than say your GT3 or your GTE car or even a Formula 3 car, which is probably uh, the natural step up uh, to this from an open wheeler. Um, or we could say that the Formula Renault 3.5 is. But it's, it's too unpredictable in that sense. And a lot of us as well, I think another big factor is that if you took a poll of the amount of people or amount of racers that don't have load cell pedals, um, it would be quite high, and this car is difficult enough to control with load cells, let alone without that additional feel of having a load cell pedal. So something needs to be done there. I think maybe the added, um, they could add some form of traction control into the car as well. And with this being a fantasy car, they have the luxury of being able to do that. Um, because it needs to, yeah, it just overall needs to become a bit more accessible for people just to jump into jump in a practice session uh, 30 minutes before a race and become more become comfortable with the car so that they can at least last a full hour session. Um, and that moves us on to now the format of the series itself. The format of the series itself is another issue and something that I think is pushing people away from the series and competing in this car. Now, of course, the car itself is always gonna be the main point um, that draws people or pushes people away, but the format isn't helping either. So in its current state, it's a 45 laps per race, which takes on average about an hour per race. And I think that is too long for a lot of people, especially in an open wheel car, which we all know these cars are very fragile, uh, but Anyone who's racing F3 will know <laughs> the new damage model. You, Of course, these cars are never designed to have contact, but even the slightest bit of contact um, will, will end your race or give you a considerable uh, decrease in performance. So there's also that factor as well that people don't want to race, um, spend that much of their evening, um, that much time in a car that some, where someone else as we see so often in Formula 3, can just end their race in an instant or spend half of their time throughout a race, they get wheel to wheel with someone and then it's over and done with. So there's that, that factor there. I think the, the laps need to be reduced, uh, the actual length of the races themselves. Now, another thing that is putting people off is I think the strategy side of things, um, the tyre compounds. Now, me personally, I like this. I like uh, when races have strategy involved. I feel like iRacing doesn't have um, 
enough of them. The only time you really get strategy that comes into play is in endurance races, but I think that's such a big part of racing in general is the strategy side of things. I do like it, but I can see why people are being put off because they don't know how a soft tire performs around a certain track or within what temperatures. They don't know whether to start on mediums and go on to hards or then go on to softs, vice versa. That's another extra added layer that the general racer within iRacing has, is, has to put up with and is a little bit, I can see why they're put off by it. But one last thing which I think is of a massive detriment to this series and its current format is its time slot. It is currently it currently sits and starts 15 minutes before the Formula 3 series does. Now, who in iRacing thought that was a good idea? I don't know. Um, I think they need to need to have a, have a drugs test because the Formula 3 series is other than the Skip Barber for obvious reasons because it's a lower license is the most popular open wheel series and I, in recent times especially over the last year with the lockdowns and the pandemic participation has only increased uh, we've gone from sometimes not even getting 100 participants for, per uh, time slot to now averaging 150 to 200 in peak times sometimes even over 300 participants now why would those people be dragged away from that series a series that they love from a car that is a lot more accessible and easier to drive it's still difficult some people still have difficulties driving it speaking from experience but it's shorter uh, it's 30 minutes long on average the races and why why are they going to be dragged away from that or pulled away from that from a series from this car which is more difficult to drive and longer and just we've seen the crashes in formula 3 this is only going to have more crashes because of the amount of power and the difficulty to drive the car who thought it was a good idea to have it at 50, start 15 minutes before i don't know but it needs to be changed there's two hours between each f3 race um even once you even if you make it to the end of a formula 3 race you've got an hour and 15 before the next race starts that's more than enough time for this series to be in between. And you can go from F3 to Delara IR01 and just keep doing that all night, um, roughly speaking. You can maybe push it back five minutes or so uh, from the start time. But that, that seems like a no-brainer to me. So I'd be very surprised if the next season update, the time slot wasn't changed uh, because that would at least get a few more people dabble because there's a bit of a downtime, there's a bit of a lull where people don't know what to do <laughs> between uh, each Formula 3 race. And a lot of people only race open wheelers. So I think that would increase participation um, a lot and probably entice me to try it as well, I will admit. And finally, let's talk about the tracks. Now, we know the tracks directly impact the participation of any series. There are certain tracks that are more popular than others. Spa, Monza, Silverstone always get really high participation. And the likes of Phillip Island and others do not. So this car is a little bit different compared to other cars or slower cars, which can be raced around pretty much any circuit on iRacing's rotor. This car is like a Formula One car. It is so fast, it is wired as well. It's a lot wider than the cars that we get um, or than the Formula One cars that are available on iRacing. So it requires, personally, Formula One circuits or Grand Prix circuits. The likes of Suzuka, the likes of Silverstone, even the Nürburgring where we did see a drop off in participation is a Formula One circuit. It's a Grand Prix circuit and that is what this series needs to stick to. Now, Phillip Island, I can perfectly see why this series has got no participation this week, because Phillip Island is just not, it doesn't get good participation at the best of times, let alone in a, a car that is struggling after a few weeks of its introduction. 
Uh, and I can see why. It just doesn't suit it. Long Beach Street Circuit next week is just going to be a shit show. No other words for it. I raced a couple of times in week 13 around Long Beach. And I know people were still getting used to the car. But even so, just chaos. Absolute chaos. And I think pretty much every <laughs> beach race is no matter what car you're in. Let alone uh, this car, which is really difficult to drive. So uh, there are different versions of the same track likewise monza has without the first chicane there are ways around it that will keep the series fresh or keep the track selection fresh you could have the grand prix version with the first chicane at the start of the season and then have without the first chicane at the end so it doesn't feel like you're racing monza week after week or the same tracks week after week but it's a car that needs to stick to grand prix tracks because otherwise you're going to have too many crashes and people are just going to be put off by it entirely. I know we like the odds joker in there every now and then. Um, the one that doesn't quite suit the car and it does throw up for a bit of uh, interest in racing and some crash montages. But with the current state this car is in and this series is in, in regards to participation, it needs to stick to the Grand Prix tracks. Um, stick to what it's suited for so yeah guys that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed that um i hope you uh, agree with me if you don't please let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you'd like to add this is an open discussion um i'm sure the guys at iRacing have discussed this already and they'll be making tweaks and changes moving forward because as i said uh those figures don't lie and something needs to be changed iRacing is a business first and foremost and it's it will be seeing this as a loss and i'm sure the guys at the lara won't be too impressed either and they'll be uh, banging their heads against the wall i think everyone will be banging their heads against the wall and trying to get this sorted so yeah guys i hope you enjoyed that remember to hit that like and subscribe button feel free to join my discord it is in the link in the description below hit me up in the comments as well and i'll see you for the next one